So after finding work and uh, leaving my my friend's house um, in order to return to another meeting, actually I think we went to a few. Um, we were living in Seattle at the time. We went to a few up there, and then maybe a few when we came back. Um, so during that time, however, I was looking and searching through various different religions. Um, there was a documentary on, on the History Channel, I believe. Um, no, it was on PBS about Buddha and Buddhism, and it really intrigued me. And then there was another documentary on the History Channel that was about um, banned from the Bible, I think it was the title of the documentary. And it talked about books that didn't make it into the Bible. And I had heard about that before out in service. When you're out in service, you know, there's always a few things that you, that the reasoning book doesn't cover, right? Um, you can come, you can come up to someone at the door um, and they start talking to you about apocryphal books or books that Jehovah's Witnesses say are apocryphal and most other Christian religions say are apocryphal. But why do they call them apocryphal? Me, when I was at the door and somebody brought that up, I didn't know what the heck they were talking about. They don't cover that at the Kingdom Hall. The Bible is the Bible. It's the Word of God. It came down from God, right? Straight straight from the, the, the mind of God through the mouths of his prophets. So, um, this documentary really opened my eyes, and I started doing research on it. And I found out interesting things like the, well, some things I already knew. Um, I knew that in the Bible stories book, um, the story of Enoch was not actually in the Bible. And that always kind of made me wonder, like, I didn't know what, what that was all about. Why, why wasn't, why was that story, why did they make up that story about Enoch? Well, they didn't make it up. It was in an apocryphal book. A book that didn't make it into the Bible because the Catholic Church, when the church was first starting, didn't think it needed to be in there. So it didn't make it into the Bible. And, um, I mean, there are there's some debate about the book, obviously. But the interesting thing is that the book, the book of Enoch, it's an actual, you know, book that Christians used to look at and Jews used to read. Um, these books this book, the book of Enoch, um, it tells the story that is in the my book of Bible stories. And that's the story that is in, in Jude. In fact, in, in, in Jude, it, it quotes from the book of Enoch directly, pretty much word for word, kind of a paraphrase, but pretty much word for word from the book of Enoch. And that story in the Bible stories book is from the book of Enoch. But if you look it up in Jehovah's Witness literature, I mean, they don't cover this a lot. If you look it up on the Watchtower Library, it does say the book is apocryphal, but it's not part of the Bible. So if it's not part of the Bible, not part of the scriptures, why are we teaching it as a Bible story to our children? Um, that was one of the first things that really shocked me.
so um, that really was a shocker to me. The whole thing with John 1.1, 1, 1, I think most, most apostates cover this, but I'm going to, I think it's worth mentioning again. Basically, I think it's something, you know, the word was, the word was with God. The word was a God is what it says in the New World Translation. But in actuality, this is the mistake of someone that is a novice Greek translator. The excuses that Jehovah's Witnesses use is that um, there is no definite article there before it says the word was God. There's no definite article saying that this was the God. So because there's no definite article, they change it to the word was a God. A is an indefinite article, meaning it's not specific to the God. It's just some God somewhere. But really, um, this doesn't mean, just because there was no definite article there, doesn't mean that, that, that that's what the translation is in the Greek. There is a definite article when referring to God the first time in that in that scripture. There's no need to include that a second time when referring referring to God in the Greek. When we're in English, you know, I mean, we even admit omit the definite article in English. We don't even say it the first time. So in from what I've read from different researchers, um, is that it's a mistake of a novice scholar, a novice translator, to change that to the word was a god. It's a mistake. Um, so this whole thing that they make such a big deal about, proving that the Trinity, proving that the Trinity is not real and things like that, um, it's it's wrong. The Trinity could very well be real, or at least it very could, it very well could be in the Bible. I'm an atheist. I don't believe in in this stuff. Maybe you're going to ask why I'm going over all this, but this is what led me to to what I've decided. Um, so, a lot of these biblical things, things that don't add up. Um, the Catholic Church compiled the Bible originally, and it originally included writings of Clement, Ignatius, and Polycarp. Um, and in those writings, the word Catholic is actually in the Bible. So those, those few books that were added, I mean, um, the writings of Clement were just a few years after, after the writings of Paul after the last books in the Bible. Um, there's no reason really to take those out. He knew the apostles. Um, so, I don't know, to me that doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Um, really to me, these things along with many other texts plus the actions of the organization of Jehovah's Witnesses as a whole prove to me that the Bible is not undeniable and that the one true religion, if it truly exists, is not truly perceivable at this time. This is what the conclusions that I came down. I wrote it all down. I'm a big nerd. Um, the Bible is just like any other book that people may consider holy. There's wisdom, there are prophecies, prophecies that have come true, and prophecies that are so fantastic and symbolic that you can make them look like anything. There are standards, there is doctrine, there are inconsistencies. The Bible is just a small compilation of holy books, and I believe 
in order to get a truly, truly get the big picture, you're interested in it. And you have to look at a larger scope of holy books. And here's my thoughts on the subject. If I had the reason the Bible is so important to me and to, and to so many people in Western civilization is because we were born in Western civilization. Over in, in Asia, the three teachings are, are very well known. And I could have very well grown up following that and believing that those books, the, you know, the, the Buddhist scripture, the Analects of Confucius, Confucius the, um, the Tao Te Ching, those books could have been my guide if I had lived over there. If I had lived in the Middle East, it could have been the Quran, or it could have been Hindu scripture. If I had been in Africa, I, I could have been into Yor Yoruba. I can never say that word. Yoruba religions. So, um, really, who's to say? I mean, because the whole Christianity thing, the whole Jehovah's Witness thing, is completely based on the Bible. If you can no longer trust that the Bible is complete, if you can no longer trust that the Bible even was given by God, it seems like it was compiled by the Catholic Church to me, um, and if they had been squabbling during that time about which books to add and which not, why, why would it be the ultimate source of guidance today? It doesn't make any sense. And uh, so, I went through and I looked at different things. I looked at different religions. I looked at Buddhism. I looked at Hinduism. I looked at the Quran. The Quran. So I looked at Confucianism. I read the Analects. I mean, you know, as much as I could in like a three year period. You know, I read all these things and I thought about them. I meditated on them just the same way I used to do when I was a Jehovah's Witness meditating on things. And, um, looked at the intellects. I found Buddhism to be very interesting. You know, I like the idea that, um, you don't necessarily need God to be a Buddhist. Um, Um, Buddha is not a god. The different Buddhas are not gods. I mean, they are considered gods by some, um, but they don't have to be considered that. They didn't consider themselves gods, especially not the original Buddha. Um, it's really more of a philosophy than a religion. And so that, that kind of intrigued me. And thinking that, because, you know, I've dealt with gender dysphoria my whole life and you know felt that I suffered <laughs> through a lot of my life and so to me Buddhism sounded really good you you're learning to let go of everything if you let go of everything and if you're not attached to anything then you don't suffer that's the idea but that's ridiculous. That's ridiculous when you when you have kids, you have to be attached. Um, so you know, can someone with kids be a Buddhist? Sure, but you know, not the way that I want it to be. And honestly, I mean, I I am still interested in the spiritual side of things. Um, but I'm going to school for electrical engineering. I've taken a lot of math and physics courses, and to me, I can they have proven, they have models of how the universe, you know, mathematical models of how the universe um, came to be, the Big Bang, and um, these ideas about different dimensions, things like that, I mean, they can prove it with math. And You can't prove God with math. You can't disprove God with science. You can't disprove God because you can't prove a negative, right? Um, but 
we can prove the opposite. We can prove how the universe started without God with math. We can't prove with math how God created the universe. And so to me, I've heard a lot of things. I, people that don't really know math like to say, oh, you can do anything if you make up the math for it. Well, that, that just shows it's someone that doesn't really understand math at all. Um, math, you don't make it up. It's a universal language as to what things are. We don't make it up. The numbers we made up. We made up how to write the numbers. But quantities and things like that, they exist. We don't make that up. Um, so you don't make up the numbers for math. You find them. If they, you, you look into the world, you try to describe it with math. And the math is already there. It's already working in the world. You just have to find it. You have to describe it. You have to find it. So, um, yeah, that's why I'm an atheist. I'm an agnostic atheist. Um, I believe there could be possibly, I'm not, I'm not completely ruling out God. I think if God did exist, it wouldn't be in the traditional sense that we know, or that we as Christians, as monotheists think. Um, and... But most likely to me, um, we are alone in the universe as far as there is no God looking out for us. There may be other races out there, other species, um, but I don't believe in God because I have never seen anything that makes me believe it. And I've suffered too much. I've seen other people suffer too much. And I just, the, the idea of God just doesn't make sense to me. So I'm an atheist. All of this searching, all of these things I did to try to understand and find something new spiritually brought me clear around to believing that there is nothing. I am an agnostic atheist and I am a humanist. Um, I'm a member of the American Humanist Association, which means I believe that we can find meaning in life. We find our own meaning in life. Um, we don't need religions to tell us how to live and how to be good people. Because basically that's what religions are. You know, the good parts of them are about how to live your life and how to be a good person. And you can take all that fluff away, all the badness away from religion. Because there is badness in, in religion. Dogma creates horrible actions in people. And so you take all that away and you're left with good actions. You look, you're left with um, being a good human. Learning how to make meaning in your life. And treating people decently. Um, so that's what I believe. And so now we come to the part where I learn about the child molestation cases of Jehovah's Witnesses. And I begin looking around on YouTube and finding all these apostate channels that I readily agree with. And um, that made me want to do what I'm doing now. And it didn't happen right away. It's been like maybe one or two years since then. I think maybe a year and a half since I started looking on YouTube at these apostate channels. Um, and it was before I started transitioning. So we're not quite at the present yet. On my next video, I'll, I'll go into that what happened next and what happened with the Jehovah's Witnesses, me coming out as an apostate and um, what I'm doing now as a transsexual.
So stay tuned for the last portion of growing up as one of Jehovah's transsexuals. Part five.